Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News webinar. It's entitled, Continuous Bioprocessing, Not a Revolution, but an Evolution. Several years ago, bioprocessors looked upon continuous bioprocessing with a skeptical eye. Now it seems like almost everyone is interested in the technology. Fully continuous bioprocessing has become a top priority at Paul Life Sciences, which maintains a continuous processing laboratory in Westboro, Massachusetts. The company has also demonstrated its commitment to this approach through significant acquisitions of critical technology. Proponents of the method cite benefits such as reduced facility footprint, capital expenses, and product cost of goods. They also say that technology can increase process productivity and flexibility and facilitate the utilization of single-use instruments and systems. To learn more about continuous bioprocessing, we've invited two experts from Paul to talk about the technology during this webinar. I'm John Sterling, Editor-in-Chief of Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News, and I will be today's webinar moderator. But first, let's meet our panelists. Peter Levison is Senior Marketing Director for Downstream Processing at Paul Life Sciences. Peter will discuss the critical technology advances that enable the application of an integrated continuous bioprocessing approach. Dr. Engen Aturk serves as Senior R&D Manager for Biopharma Applications R&D in Integrated Continuous Bioprocessing at Paul. Engen will provide examples of the implementation of an end-to-end -end continuous bioprocessing platform using novel technologies. After the panelists make their presentations, there will be a question and answer segment. Feel free to send in a question for our panelists at any time during the webinar. Type your question into the Ask a Question box on the lower left of your console, and then hit Submit. The panel will try to answer as many questions as possible. Before I introduce the first speaker, though, uh, we'd like to put up a poll uh, for our audience, a couple of questions. So let me run that. First question, are you currently evaluating any continuous techniques? Please select all that apply. And the next question, if you answered yes to the above question, what is your timeline to evaluate continuous technologies? Again, please select all that apply. And thank you again. Uh, so if everyone's ready, Peter Levison will be our lead-off presenter. Peter? So good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining this afternoon's webinar. So continuous manufacturing is already well established in quite a number of other industry sectors, such as the glass industry, the use of blast furnaces in power stations in, in oil refineries. So the challenge facing us in the biopharmaceuticals industry is when and how can we introduce continuous manufacturing into our sector? So this is our continuous lab in our Westboro, Massachusetts facility. We opened it uh, approximately a year ago, and this is a 36 square meter uh, laboratory where we can do a continuous biomanufacturing process moving from a fed batch bioreactor through the purification and um, concentration stages, giving us bulk drug substance. We can process in excess of two grams of pure monoclonal per hour within this facility. So why would we want to consider moving? to continuous from the established batch processes. But really, the, the driver is all about reduction of waste. And 
as we move into lean manufacturing, the concept of one piece flow um, is very critical and important. And if you can imagine that the antibody is the piece, then you would flow it through continuously through the downstream process. The benefit is reduction in waste and giving higher quality and better productivity than you may get in a conventional batch process with a smaller operating footprint. And there's two key areas that we want to focus on today. One is the primary clarification of the cell culture, and the second is the chromatography steps, both key unit operations in a manufacturing process of a biopharmaceutical. So what is our vision for continuous bioprocessing? We intend to be the leading provider of integrated platform technologies for continuous manufacturing of biologics. This is going to be very much based on platform processes that we would like to see robust against multiple molecules. So we set ourselves a target that greater than 75% of molecules being designed for, for biological therapeutics at multiple scales of operation, both PD, clinical, and commercial manufacturing can be made in a continuous manner. We're targeting completion of the process development within four weeks at high overall yield. And we have to meet or exceed the purity requirements that conventional batch processes would expect. So for a monoclonal antibody after the chromatography, host cell protein levels of less than 10 parts per million and aggregate levels of less than 1% would typically be expected. So the title of our talk was Evolution, Not Revolution. And if you look at this um, picture here of a continuous process, you can see that the unit operations that are involved are no different from the unit operations that you would currently employ. Clarification, purification, viral filtration, concentration, diafiltration, and final concentration. And the continuous process uses exactly the same cell culture media, the same solvents, the same membranes, the same buffers, the same materials of construction, all similar to those that you currently use in a batch process. So it truly is an evolution rather than a revolution. And I think this is important as you consider moving from batch to continuous. So I'm initially going to focus on the cell clarification stage. Primary clarification of cell culture is typically carried out using either centrifuges or uh, very large depth filters. And this gives a partial clarification of the cell culture, which is then typically polished with a smaller depth filtration um, assembly. So we, are, we have introduced a technology called acoustic wave separation for cell clarification. Within the system, we have a flow path, and through the flow path, um, a transducer generates an acoustic wave, a low frequency. The, the acoustic wave hits a reflector and then moves back across the flow path, generating a three-dimensional standing wave. And across the waves are a series of nodes. Cells then enter the flow channel, and they move through the acoustic zone. When they enter the acoustic zone, the cells migrate towards the nodes where they associate with each other and form a clump. As the clump increases in size, so the, the cells become denser and the clumps sediment out um, against the gra by gravity against the flow. The result is clarified cell culture fluid exiting from the acoustic chamber. This is a continuous process, there's minimal temperature rise, and we see no impact on protein quality during the separation. 
following the clarification using the acoustic separator, then there's a requirement to do a secondary polishing using a depth filter. And in this slide, you can see that the area of depth media that you require to do the secondary polishing is significantly less than you would use in a primary clarification. And it's also independent of the starting um, cell density. And we find typically that you will use about 25% the area of depth media for the secondary portion that you would use for the primary. So we introduced the cadence acoustic separator PD unit at Interfex in April this year. It operates at uh, between three and four liters an hour, so it will process the contents of a uh, 20 liter fed batch bioreactor in a few hours. And since process scale, continuous processing is really where we are targeting, we are planning to launch a larger scale unit that will process the contents of a 2,000 liter bioreactor within several hours uh, in early 2017. And we are well on the path of demonstrating scale up and maintenance of the quality of the material um, as part of this development. We recognize that the fusion culture is a, a emerging and very important area in the manufacturing biologics. So we're also developing an acoustic wave separation system for perfusion cell culture. That's quite different performance requirements from that being used for fed batch in that the cells need to be returned to the bioreactor and the system has got to operate under aseptic conditions for up to 90 days. So more work to, to do on that, but we have um, prototype systems that were uh, developed and were shown again at Interfex earlier this year. We now move on to the chromatography stages of the process. Last year we acquired the assets of Tarpon Biosystems that have continuous multi-column chromatography systems. Uh, and we have a PD version, the Cadence BioSMB PD. This has a single use flow path and a set that can handle up to 16 column positions. And we are currently in the, in the final stages of developing our process system that will process the contents of a 2,000 liter bioreactor. The image on the, in the lower right um, is the instrument. We demonstrated and showed a preliminary concept version at Interflex earlier this year, and the product itself is scheduled for launch at the BPI meeting in Boston in October. Now, very key to continuous processing is single pass TFF technology. And we, this technology has been exploited with the inline concentrator and single pass TFF products uh, available through Paul using uh, proprietary technology. And the cadence inline concentrator is a very useful tool to improve the productivity of a chromatographic process. It's well known that increasing the concentration of the feed can in fact increase the binding performance and the capture efficiency of the chromatography column. So what we have worked on, including the inline concentrator with the BioSMB multi-column chromatography system. So in this slide, we are comparing a conventional batch process with a multi-column chromatography process with and without the inline concentrator. So if you look at the specific productivity of the system, 
The batch process is producing 10 grams of antibody per liter of protein A per hour. When we go to a multi-column mode, we increase the productivity to in excess of 40 grams of antibody per liter of protein A per hour. But if we put an inline concentrator on the feed line before it enters the chromatography columns, then we get a further 50% improvement in productivity. So simply by integrating two continuous unit operations together, we're able to get a seven-fold improvement in productivity compared to a conventional batch process. If we then look to, to scale up, if we move up to a 2,000 litre bioreactor, which are the sizes that would be used in final stage clinical manufacture, then in order to process the antibody being generated, then it's quite likely that in a batch mode you will use chromatography columns of, of up to 100 litres in volume. And this is a, a significant amount of protein A media that is going to be used. Whereas in a continuous multi-column process, we envisage that you will use column volumes of only one, two, three liters perhaps. And using those in a, in a, in a multi-column mode using the recycling that is uh, facilitated by the, the bioSMB technology, this will have a significant cost of good reduction simply in protein A absorbent alone let alone the productivity benefits that you'll see by having improved uh, throughput and therefore the uh, associated buffer reductions. Taking it potentially to, a, to, to another dimension, because of the throughput that you can get with the BioSMB PD, and the fact that in many early stage clinical trials, you may need uh, a few hundred grams or perhaps a kilogram or two of a monoclonal antibody to, to run the trial, then with a high titer system, um, the mass of antibody produced um, within the bioreactor can, in principle, be purified within a day using the BioSMB PD. And this table on this slide does summarize what potentially could be produced using what is, in essence, a PD system, but in an environment where you may want to do clinical manufacturing. So, we are now looking at evolution. Several years ago, single-use technologies were introduced, and they've now become very established within bioprocessing. And if a single-use facility is where we start from now, then there's a continuum that we can move along. We're able to intensify processes. The continuous chromatography shows how we can intensify the absorption phenomenon on the protein A or other chromatography absorbents. We can start to integrate unit operations together putting the inline concentrator using the single pass technologies alongside chromatography can improve the productivity of the chromatography absorbent. The next stage, and my colleague Dr. Adzok will talk about this momentarily, is how we start to integrate these unit operations together to give a continuous processing solution. And the impact of doing all of this is improved utilization of the facility, introduction of manufacturing flexibility, and reductions in processing time, operating costs, footprints, and capital outlay, all key drivers for the medicines of the future. What is available? Well, as of today, we have the cadence acoustic separator for PV available, as is the cadence ILC, and the cadence by SMB PD. In 2017, and we're targeting the Intertech show, we hope to have the 
acoustic wave separator available at full scale GMP to process a 2,000 litre fed batch bioreactor, and at the same time have a perfusion system available that will process perhaps 10 litre perfusion bioreactors. And then in late, late 2016, we will introduce the BioSMB process, which will allow you to purify the contents of a 2,000 litre fed batch bioreactor. But that's not the end of the story. There's still more to come. And we are actively working on and addressing some of the challenges in process monitoring and control of these integrated systems, and looking at aspects of the automation, working with our colleagues in validation and regulatory to assist and provide the packages and the information and guidance that are required there. And then there's additional enabling technologies, continuous viral activation, systems for continuous virus filtration, and also looking at single pass technologies for inline dye filtration. These are all well in development and products to meet these needs will be introduced over the next 12 to 18 months as well. So with that, thank you for your attention. We welcome any questions. Well, I'm going to now pass across to my colleague, Dr. Ertuk, who will provide uh, a lot more technical information on how our continuous processing lab operates. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for that detailed description of the technology and platform advances that are critical for the implementation of a continuous bioprocessing strategy. You definitely set the stage for the talk that follows, so thank you again. If you're just now joining our webinar, thank you for tuning in. Just a reminder that there will be a question and answer segment after the last presentation. Please type your question in the box on the left-hand side of your console and then hit submit. But before I introduce our next speaker, I do have another polling question. What continuous techniques interest you the most? Again, please select all that apply. Thank you very much. And our next speaker is Engen. Engen, you're up. Hello, everyone. Opportunity for improvement is really an essential phrase that captures one of the key motivations behind our continuous bioprocessing initiatives and especially the work I'd like to share today. We realize that the ability to streamline processes towards a one-piece flow brings noticeable progress that eventually leads to evolution of no processes as uh, uh, discussed in detail with my colleague, Dr. Uh, Levison. And this clearly embarks the start of our continuous bioprocessing journey. In order to realize such potential, we've taken a closer look at the conventional map purification platform as we know it, and created continuous buckets of unit operation sequences with the numerous enabling and novel technologies that are available in our portfolio. Starting with the coupling of Cadence Acoustic Separator, CAS, and legacy depth sterile filter trains, we have used single pass inline concentrator, ILC technology, as a pre-capture concentration tool to link clarification and purification steps, which provided a highly productive continuous capture step. So unique utilization of Cadence by SMB further enabled the realization of additional process intensification opportunities within continuous low pH viral inactivation and uh, continuous polishing steps. Furthermore, continuous viral clearance and continuous viral final formulation buckets were filled with the utilization of novel and in-development products that provided fully continuous unit operation trains based on coupling direct flow filters with the single pass TFF technology. We will then build robustness by the uh, successful implementation of PAT automation, process control, and, and validation strategies uh, added to this platform. But please note that our approach at this stage is agnostic to upstream processing choices as we see tremendous benefits and committed to develop technologies for both fed batch and perfusion technologies. As we have identified on alternate scenarios, uh, we've utilized another lean manufacturing uh, principle called tri-storming. 
and started building 14 to 16 unit operations into this process development PD lab. In addition to daily activities, this also became our playground for the current and future process and product development activities and also helped us build the common language between our end users with respect to process development opportunities and associated challenges. The approach we have developed is a simple yet effective one and primarily built around leveraging the uh, prior process knowledge. In this context, we would run quick feasibility tests and search for early optimization and sizing opportunities. As we built new or novel process knowledge with the help of performance and process control maps, we would then initiate process coupling runs with multiple unit operations at a time to generate islands of continuous processing. So once we have demonstrated the robustness and generated enough confidence to this agile approach, we would then move forward with integration runs. So coupled with monitoring, control, and validation strategies that are explored in parallel, such approach is also deemed as effective to identify near future process and product development needs as it creates a continuous funnel of communication. Our walkthrough, our walkthrough within our integrated continuous bioprocessing platform starts with the continuous clarification. And here's a quick video of Cho cells getting trapped in the acoustic zone and pulled down via the combined utilization of gravitational and convective forces, resulting in a continuously clarified stream. While we were conducting in-house and external feasibility studies to better understand this new unit operation, we have also completed filterability studies with various feeds, thanks to our numerous collaborators, and generated massive amount of data that can not only be correlated for sizing studies at wide range of scales, but also offered significant, and in this case, three to tenfold reduction in filter area requirements when compared to post-bioreactor sizing studies. Once we have further build confidence per product quality through good map transmission and an average of 50% reduction in impurities like DNA and HCP optimized conditions were tested during continuous runs. Leveraging exit knowledge and process understanding resulted in stable and robust processing conditions as evidenced by the reduction of total cell density, TCD, and turbidity, and TU values way over the target 85% mark during the extended test duration of 14 hours. Indeed, we've also realized additional benefits such as enhanced filtration capacity, which was dictated by the continuous run conditions. As we filled our continuous clarification bucket, the next step in the process presents a compelling challenge, linking continuous clarification and purification trains while generating a concentrated feed to enhance the productivity of the capture chromatography step, again, under preset operating conditions. It's worth mentioning that previous process knowledge in this case was built around long-term ILC robustness studies to help identify the processing limits by individual or uncoupled 24-hour rounds at different loadings. And also similarly, we've done process coupling runs with BIOSMB, and then which uh, helped us identify noticeable productivity imp improvements with respect to conventional batch processing. So going back to our continuous coupling challenge, tree capture ILC optimization is a prime example of how single pass TFF technology can eliminate process bottlenecks and provide a process essential solution under a very narrow operational window and with very limited degrees of freedom. So with clarification and purification requirements well established as depicted by X and Y axes here respectively, and then we've generated performance maps with the actual feeds and preset operating conditions and identified mismatches and shortcomings in performance. Then we benchmarked various process control strategies to eliminate process transients during long-term testing to provide a robust integration strategy with reproducible results. Putting all to this resulted in successfully integrated continuous clarification and continuous capture steps through continuous concentration, delivering over two grams per hour continuously clarified and concentrated harvest for the rest of the continuous pur uh, purification train. Next, it's worth mentioning that BioSMB is quite a unique continuous chromatography chromatography skit featuring a disposable valve block with 16 column positions that provides significant built-in flexibility for both today's and future's bioprocessing challenges. 
And in this context, we further leveraged its utilization as a process intensification opportunity by coupling capture and low pH virus inactivation steps. As shown by the wealth block uh, schematic in the process workflow, we have used the available column positions on the BioSMB valve plug for acid and base dosing simply by the help of programmable external pumps that are used for continuous recirculation and transfer of liquid from one tank to the next. For the capture step, on the other hand, we have utilized eight 5 mil columns pre-packed with Canica's CanCafe sorbent, which is recently added to our portfolio through a worldwide supply contract. And CANCAPE is a high-performance protein sorbent with rigid cellulose-based matrix, and that is engineered to improve mat purity by minimizing the, the fat binding, and also has high caustic stability to extend reuse and service life, service life. I will not further deep dive into the development strategy for the intensified capture and VI unit operations, but rather the importance of monitoring and process uh, stability, uh, monitoring process stability continuously. The so trending plots shown here provides a good traceability of the pH during dosing, hold and transfer steps in conjunction with the elution peak profiles that also captures startup and shutdown dynamics. So building upon these well-established bi-SMB cycles and stable VI profiles, it's noteworthy to mention that we further extend this operation to 14 hours, corresponding to more than 20 cycles during the processing of a 50-liter batch. Transitioning from continuous capture plus VI, to transitioning from continuous capture plus VI to continuous polishing, we've added a robust depth and 0.2 micron filtration train to better manage the potential uh, post-VI particulates. So, in addition to low DP, which was very low Pmax target, a high capacity and NTU reduction profiles, we've also observed um, reduction of high molecular weight aggregates as an additional uh, benefit. Similar process intensification opportunity was realized for the continuous polishing step, utilizing BiSMB for the coupling of Mustang Q membrane absorbers, uh, which are operated in flow through mode, and CMM Hypercell, an acidic mixed mode sorbent, which, ran, which was ran in bind and elute mode as anion and cation exchange steps, respectively. Although what we're showing here is a distilled version of our optimization steps, design space analyses, leveraging prior process knowledge consists of high throughput studies with 96 well plates, which were then benchmarked against and verified with small column uh, studies in batch mode, and then transferred to BiSMB continuous mode. So as shown by the response surface and overlaid counterplot data, the best performance was obtained at high pH and low conductivity conditions, providing as high as 60-fold HCP reduction for Mustang Q and high binding capacity for CMM. Then, as an additional process improvement opportunity, we further questioned the order of unit operations and conducted studies both ways. Since we have achieved similar quality attributes, uh, irrespective of sequence, our continuous polishing platform was finalized, favoring Mustang Q over CMM sequence, as it required no buffer adjustment and simplified process integration. And as evident from elution process, adopting such strategy led to a very stable process, monitored over 30 cycles that lasted around 16 hours and resulted in less than 10 ppm host cell protein uh, and less than 1% aggregates. Moving to continuous virus clearance, we have conducted early feasibility and sizing studies, both with mimic and actual feeds operated in constant flux mode to confirm the target performance for this intrinsically continuous step. Therefore, our main focus was on the continuous form final formulation and specifically to address the existing innovation gap with respect to continuous dye filtration. Although many approaches utilize, uh, to utilize single-pass TFF in concert with conventional UFDF steps have been explored, majority of them fail to provide a simple and truly continuous solution. And in this context, our primary design and development priorities were to provide a fully continuous solution that needs to be built upon single pass principles. Uh, the technology needs to be capable of high removal factors, so targeting tree lock or 99.9% .9 or higher buffer uh, exchange or uh, impurity removal efficiency. An elegant design that enables simple operation and ease of use, and finally, a scalable technology which requires the use of existing building blocks. 
So enabled by an agile product development initiative, our inline dye filtration or uh, ILDF working prototype has been extensively tested through multiple collaborative studies. And one of which that I'd like to highlight today is the collaboration with Mark. And many thanks to Mark Brower and his team for helping us expand the utilization of the ILDF technology via inline and or online UPLC application. We have conducted UPLC-coupled ILDF runs for the in-situ monitoring of monomer, aggregate, and buffer peaks for three monoclonal molecules with 35 to 45 grams per liter concentration range and operated at a 3 log or 99.9% .9 removal set point, which resulted in stable processing over extended testing as long as 17 hours with inline UPLC as we maintained flow and pressure stability and confirmed no aggregate generation throughout. Further tests for performance validation included many collaborative challenges that successfully explored numerous molecules and buffer systems and a wide range of removal targets, flow rates, and concentrations, providing that ILDF technology is clearly capable of high removal factors as comfort, by, confirmed by marker studies as well as excipient analyses. is also uh, robust and responds to process set point changes instantaneously due to its simplified design and built-in control strategy, and therefore provide a linear and steady response to various removal targets. And finally, and more importantly, ILDF technology proven to be reproducible during this early uh, development stage. With that, and in concentration of able processing volumes and scheduling constraints at PD scale, our streamlined strategy for the final continuous train uh, consist consisted of providing a continuously polished, virus-cleared, and dye-filtered map feeds onto the single-pass TFF and sterilizing gray filtration train. Although numerous permutations of the sequence is possible uh, based on custom processing targets, we have su successfully integrated continuous viral and final formulation steps to achieve um, stable processing of virus clearance and flux of 320 LMH with a volumetric throughput capacity exceeding 5,000 liters per meter square during the duration of our 50 liter batch runs, with inline diaphragmation operating at 99.9% .9 removal efficiency and a 15 fold final concentration factor uh, achieved through ILC and sterile filtration. Here is a panoramic spread of our integrated continuous bioprocessing lab during a 24-hour end-to-end continuous run. As we were able to establish steady-state operating conditions for almost all unit operations within the first four to six hours, a pre-ILC pooling strategy was implemented at the end uh, without affecting the continuity of the uh, process due to the volume limitations uh, that uh, we arrive at, the, at this current scale. So within six to eight month timelines, we were able to fully integrate 14 to 16 unit operations that is capable of producing an average of 1 to 2 grams per hour purified map. And also worth mentioning that high mass throughput of around 9 to 10 grams per hour was also observed for the final ILC sterile step. Uh, and this also highlights the scalability and productivity potential of this continuous platform, even at this scale. Last but not least, the sampling strategy we have implemented clearly confirmed that we were in full control of our process and associated critical quality attributes uh, as we closely monitored and measured the map titer, HCP, and aggregate levels per unit operation and also as a function of elapsed processing time. So such monitoring capability allowed us to identify deviations early on. And it, which opens the doors for advanced PAT. For example, we were able to identify an aggregation issue due to a pH shift during a final formulation step and then take necessary corrective actions to bring the process back to target, target uh, CQA levels or below. And in summary, final process that we were able to uh, um, generate uh, within this PD lab had less than 10 ppm HCP content and less than 1% aggregates uh, as clearly shown by the CQA trending plots here. So this is where we were, 
and this is where we will be heading by the adoption of novel PAT automation process control and validation strategies. And the ultimate goal is we can collectively really uh, utilizing the, uh, all the strategies outlined uh, uh, within today's talk. With that, I would like to thank my Asian R&D colleagues who worked tirelessly on this project and also to various cross-functional team members and especially our collaborators whose support was essential and much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Engen, and thanks again to you, Peter, for providing an excellent and informative overview of integrated continuous bioprocessing, including the challenges and opportunities for product development. Before we go to our Q&A, I do have two final polling questions. Paul Life Sciences is actively developing products for continuous processing at all scales. Please select all that apply if you would like to be considered for the following. Question, would you like a Paul representative to contact you with further information on continuous processing? And thank you very much for answering the questions. Well, it looks like our webinar speakers certainly connected with our audience based on the questions we received for the Q&A section. So please bear with us as we prepare for our Q&A segment. Okay, so let's do the first question. Hold on one second. Okay. We're just looking over the questions to get the best one. Peter, we have the first question for you. Does the continuous capture technology use pack bed columns or free flowing resins? Peter, are you there? Yeah, all, all the work that we've done so far um, uses packed columns, um, and we typically have a preference for commercially available pre-packed columns, particularly where you have uh, multiple um, units being processed to ensure there's reproducibility. But also, quite importantly, is you can use membrane chromatography as well which is an inherently pre-packed device, uh, as we demonstrated in our map purification study. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Peter, will cells de-aggregate after they get clumped in the acoustic path and settle down? The clumpy cells tend to die from inside due to insufficient gas exchange. So if somebody not only had a question, they also made a comment. Want to answer that? Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's a very good question, actually. And it's, um, it's quite hard to describe how the acoustic separator works without seeing it. But the cells don't really aggregate in their accepted chemical sense. They kind of reversibly associate with each other. And then they form these larger clumps, which settle out. And then they kind of disperse again. So in fed batch, we get quite a concentrate of cells, which goes to waste, because uh, they are, in fact, a waste product. But in the perfusion application that we're working on, then we will need to return the majority of the cells to the bioreactor. And um, the cells probably need to be out of the bioreactor for no more than one minute. So maintaining viability is absolutely critical, not only for the single pass through the acoustic separator, but the fact that a perfusion system will last for uh, many, many days. Um, and certainly the, the initial data that we've generated from our uh, alpha testing is very encouraging in this. So very good question, good point. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Do you envision fewer number of process steps utilized in your platform? Um, I think that's a very good question as well. So the, the challenge that we've taken over uh, to start the process was a, a very generic map platform. And uh, as we were able to show the proof of concept for an end-to-end -end continuous run, 
uh, we will be also you know, looking at other options in terms of continuous upstream platforms as well, So, which requires the obsolete, uh, to obsolete some of the unit operations that you wouldn't typically, uh, you would typically utilize in the Fed batch processes. And more importantly, as we develop more confidence to the platform and, and then develop, uh, develop a platform utilizing these technologies and with efficient monitoring and process control, we may not necessarily need all the, uh, the uh, risk mitigating steps from a filtration point of view. Uh, and et cetera. So there might be some more customization and tailoring actually might take place as we were able to you know, uh, work with different molecules and uh, move through a, 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 a well-sounding uh, well uh, platform approach. And, and get another question. What is the overall process yield? So um, uh, we've been running continuous end-to-end -end runs, uh, starting with our acoustic uh, wave separation technology as our clarification uh, step all the way down to stereo filtration at 25 and uh, 50 liter scales. And um, uh, within the, I think it's a six to eight months pe uh, development period, as I mentioned during my talk, but within the last month, and then we haven't got more chances to, you know, like to run more batches, in this realm, uh, but uh, we get an average around 58 to 60 percent overall yield, and uh, we hope to improve that uh, in the upcoming months and the, as we actually build more process monitoring and control strategies and we can optimize each and every individual uh, steps uh, uh, in, in more detail. So our target will be 65 percent or higher. Thank you. And then get another question. What range of concentrations were tested with the single pass diafiltration? And what did you mean by simplicity with respect to process control? Oh, um, a very, uh, a very good question. Actually. So during our initial assessment in-house, we had model solutions that we've uh, uh, looked at the performance and the uh, separation efficiency between 10 to 80 grams per liter. And I also mentioned that we've collaborated quite intensively and during those um, uh, studies in the last six months or so, I think the, uh, the range of concentrations that we have evaluated with various different molecules will range between four to 75 grams per liter, not to mention the variety of different buffer systems. Um, um, uh, and the other question was, John? Uh, uh, and what did you mean by simplicity with respect to process control? Oh, so uh, enabling a, a solution for a single pass diafiltration is really uh, requires a, uh, a, a efficient way of distributing buffers to enable a single pass or a, a continuous diafiltration approach. So that has been proven to be a, a quite a challenging task as you're dealing with these incompressible fluids and trying to manage the, not only the flow rates but also the individual pressures during uh, whatever the flow path that's being generated to uh, take over this task. So uh, our major focus for development is how to enable that as simple as possible without requiring uh, sophisticated automation or control. So that's basically the simplicity that we were focusing on early on as we were uh, developing the approach because uh, a diluting and concentrating uh, a known feed to enable a buffer exchange wasn't the trickiest part from our end as we had the single pass TFF technology in our portfolio but how to enable that simplicity um, uh, of buffer distribution. So the, uh, I can't go into further details of, uh, or the specifics to that, but what I can say is we have a manual setup that actually operates hands-free and, and it, can, it can operate at any set point uh, without any uh, automated or process control uh, sophistication. And then again, uh, someone wants to know, have you identified your process analytical technology, also known as PAT, strategy? If so, can you please comment on it? Um, this is really the, the, the bread and butter of uh, the, 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 where we want to take this initiative uh, and how we want to advance it, take it to the next level, basically. The PAT is really you know, something that's ongoing in parallel. When it comes to just monitoring and logging data, uh, there, this PAT can be very simple with the conductivity meters, the sensors, the, the pressure sensors, flow meters, and et cetera. Uh, but when it really comes to uh, keeping a hands on the quality of the product, it can be very sophisticated as well, as you also get a chance to bring in uh, some uh, advanced techniques uh, in situ or at line or online. So we are uh, actively evaluating different techniques and also uh, uh, investing in these technologies as well because 
the, the uh, our ability to effectively monitor what's going on in that PD lab will definitely help us uh, uh, build the right strategies as we want to uh, also build automation on top of PAT. But um, I think the what I can say for the time being, it's, uh, it's a very active ongoing uh, project that's taking place in parallel as we learn how to run these uh, and as we learn how to, you know, how to improve it further. Thank you very much. And Peter, someone wants to know, do you have any scale-up data? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so scale-up is something that we are actively working on. I, I showed you um, a taster of some scale-up data on the uh, acoustic separator. And um, we are working with partners to generate large-scale uh, data with that system. Um, and as I mentioned, we will be introducing a um, large-scale acoustic separator um, in April next year. We are at the very late stages of developing our large-scale bioSMB, and that will process the contents of a, a 2,000-litre fed batch bioreactor. And our intention is to do an experiment where we will scale up a separation initially from batch to the BioSMB PD, so the benchtop system, and then use the same feedstock uh, generated in a very large bioreactor to run the um, BioSMB process. So I'm very hopeful that within the next uh, three to four months, there will be quite a good data set demonstrating scalability of some of these um, systems. And everything that we develop at small scale that is scalable we will generate scale-up data. Yeah, thank you. And Peter, are the regulatory authorities commenting on continuous processing? Um, OK, so I, I, I can't speak for the regulators, because I'm not one. Um, but they, they've been very positive um, in their discussion of um, continuous biomanufacturing um, at various conferences. But I think what was um, very important and, and really was a, a kind of game changer in our industry is that fairly recently um, the FDA uh, approved a process change for Janssen. And this was uh, a batch process for a small molecule, which they have now converted to continuous. So I think that probably has set a precedent uh, in the industry and is one that is um, well received. So. Uh, I'm very, very hopeful that uh, the regulatory challenges will not be uh, so traumatic. And Peter, you'd mentioned COGS reduction for continuous compared to batch, and some wants to know if you can be a little more specific. Okay. Um, so, so, so costs of goods um, are highly process dependent, but if you can improve the productivity of this specific unit operation, then you ought to get better utilization of that asset, and that should um, result in a, a cost of goods improvement. Now, how much individuals pay for their reagents, their chromatography media, their membranes, et cetera, um, is, is down to, to individual circumstances. But as an example, you know, on, on the um, multi-column chromatography, we see much more efficient use of, for example, a protein A adsorbent or the mixed mode adsorbents. And by using a smaller chromatography column, you clearly save money just on the adsorbent alone. But by using smaller columns, you require less buffer um, for the wash, the elution, the cleaning place, etc. So less cost in making buffers, less whiffing, um, less disposal, and less effluent costs. So the overall cost of goods should reduce quite significantly going from batch to continuous. But to put an exact number on it, it it's not possible. It is process by process, case by case. A, a very good question. Thank you. And Peter, someone says, you presented a large group of continuous products, but you use them only in continuous processes. Um, OK, thank you. So yes, we are, we are actively trying to develop more and more continuous products. 
And yes, they can be used in continuous processes. They can also be used as discrete unit operations in a batch process. You know, we're not doing anything fundamentally different from what is being done today. We're just operating it in a slightly different way. So uh, the single pass tangential flow filtration, um, which we offer, can be used in, in batch processes just as much as it can be used in continuous. The multi-column chromatography process can be used with a fed batch bioreactor, and it may be used with batch processes downstream. So um, it's, it's down to individual preferences that you're not locked into doing things continuously just because the um, unit operation potentially can be done in continuous mode. And Peter, someone asked a question very similar to what you just answered, but I'll, since they asked it, I'm going to ask it. And um, I embrace an entire continuous process from the start, or I concentrate on discrete unit operations. Okay, so so I guess you could go to a, constrict, a, com, a complete um, continuous process from the start, basing it on a diffusion system or a series of fed batch that all finished. Uh, on consecutive days, but the likelihood is that people will create these so-called islands of continuity. So they'll take a cluster of unit operations and, and bring them together. So the, clar the clarification process uses the acoustic separator. It will have a, a small depth filter following it, and then a, a biobuilding reduction filter. Those could be configured together, and then maybe you'll put it into a storage bag. The inline concentrator improves the efficiency of the chromatography capture step. So again, those two unit operations can be bundled together. You might bundle together the elution from a protein A with the um, viral inactivation step and then do a pull. So I think people will most likely integrate select unit operations and then gradually integrate those islands together until ultimately you get to the uh, final continuous process. Uh, I hope that's um, explained it as best as I can. Okay. Good. And Peter, someone wants to know, do you have a solution for continuous cell culturing? OK, I'm sorry if I didn't make that very clear. Yes, so perfusion is really the approach for, for continuous cell culture. And using suspension spells in a perfusion mode um, with the right uh, type of clarification, then you effectively have continuous subculture. So yes. Well, unfortunately, we run out of time, but you'll be able to access this webinar within 24 hours on our website, www.genengnews.com. In addition, the webinar will be archived for one year on our website. Uh, again, www.genengnews.com. If you miss parts of it, you can watch it again, or you can recommend it to your colleagues and friends, which we highly recommend. Uh, thank you again to the panel for your outstanding presentations, and thank you to the audience for your attention and for your thoughtful questions about various topics brought up during the webinar. And thank you to Paul Life Sciences, whose support made this webinar possible. Bye for now. <laughs>